This is Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are joined today from Sacramento, by the way, by Autumn Burke. She is a member of the California State Assembly. And uh, suffice it to say, it's been a bumpy year for the California Coastal Commission. Yes, Who would have thunk <laughs> that the Coastal Commission would get thrown into such a maelstrom, but it did. We don't need to go there as to why or what happened, but I do know that many of you and your colleagues are looking at trying to reform the Coastal Commission. Give us a sense of where the commission is today. Well, uh, listen, I, I'm not sure that I'm looking to reform the commission, okay. but what I would like to do is give the commission what I believe was the original authority with which it was um, presented. Right. So what had happened in, is in about in, in the 80s, uh, the affordable housing portion of the Coastal Act was removed um, and the environmental justice portion, which allowed them to make decisions based on those two factors. And let's do talk about that because it is an interesting piece of history. I was not aware right. until I, I read this that there was this affordable housing element, this environmental justice element, but apparently within five or so, I guess within 10 years of Prop 20 and then five years of the Coastal Act, these elements that allowed for this type of uh, action were just removed. They were removed. In the, in the dark of night. Right. And they weren't so in the dark <laughs> of night. People okay. voted on it, but really? they did vote on it. But as a result, we lost, there were 5,000 affordable housing units that were slated to be built. And the day that those that provision was removed, 4,000 of those went away. Oh, my. And if you do the math from the 80s to now, how many units that really is right. a true, that's a true loss for affordable housing units on the coast. So. And what was the vision? Was it to have affordable homes? I'm, I'm trying to envision this. Affordable beach property, you know? Like what a, was the vision when they it, took it out? No, no, no. What, what is the vision my for vision? affordable housing okay. on the coast? Here's my vision, and it's, it's really much more broad than just Please. affordable housing on the coast. I live in a district that is part coastal, but right. is that Give also, us a sense where it is. So I am Venice, Marina del Rey, El Segundo, Westchester. I have LAX in my district, Beautiful. but then I also have Inglewood, Hawthorne, oh. Lenox, Lawndale, West Athens, which was named one of the most challenged areas in the state of California about six years ago. So you have ago. some of the wealthiest and, and some of the most challenged. Exactly. Right. And what I have found is, and... After years, and listen, my mom's represented portion of the same district on and off for 50 years. Mom, of course, Yvonne Brathwaite Burke, absolutely. a legendary figure in California. <laughs> absolutely. If I may say. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I had the opportunity to see as she served was that there were young people, children, families on the eastern portion of my district, what is now my district, mm -hmm. that have never seen the ocean. Can you believe that? Right. And you know what? You're right, yeah. because I have heard that before. Yeah. I mean, that you live in Los Angeles and you've and never, never seen, seen the ocean. ocean. And that is tragic, right. because it's not just about the ocean. It's about this is our largest natural resource. The Coastal Commission was put there to make sure that everyone had access to it. And unfortunately, things have been removed from the Coastal Act that have impaired that. So let's talk about your vision. So yeah. you would bring back these elements, affordable housing, environmental justice. Yes. What does that mean? When, if I'm, your bill passes, right. what will happen? What will happen? I'm hoping that, first of all, there is obviously access to affordable housing um, on the coast, near the coast, uh, for, for low-income families. But also, just to remind people, because what else is in the bill is we're talking about bringing three new environmental justice commissioners onto the board as and, well. And let's talk about that, because yeah, it's absolutely. tricky. I mean, it's tricky. you hear about like court packing plans. I remember that from my <laughs> FDR right. history days. And one could argue this is a bit of packing, trying to get a certain result. And so how do you create right. a scenario whereby it's not seen as so overtly politicized, but as a way to try to, I guess, level Right, the, the, the playing the, field. Right, level the right. playing field. And that's it. We really just want to level the playing field. We want to make sure that there is a diversity of perspective on the commission and that there are those who have a history or have um, a past in working on environmental justice issue and that that perspective is brought to the board. And so under your plan, there would be three new commissioners, yes, one appointed by the governor, the Senate, and then the assembly. Right. Uh, what does leadership think about this? I mean, it's always nice to have another appointment, but, right. but what, what, what's your sense? Um, honestly, my I don't, so far, so good, right? right yeah, <laughs> so far, so yeah, good. Exactly. We've made it through committee. You did. We have, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, so, like I said, so far, so good. Um, I think the reality is, is we just did this with the CARB board last year. Right. Which is Air Resources Board. Which is the Air Resources mm -hmm. Board. So I think there is some history for, or actually we're starting to build a history 
Um, unfortunately, in my perspective, some of our boards and commissions aren't as diverse as maybe they need to be. Mm. And, and when so you say I'm diverse, hoping... meaning diverse viewpoints. Yes, is what it seems absolutely. As if. absolutely. Right. Diverse. I mean, listen, I, I diverse viewpoints to make sure that there are those who actually think about other communities, poor right. communities, wealthy communities, all communities as they're making their decisions across the board. But and that, that's not just Coastal Commission. But I do want to ask more about the Coastal Commission because for better or for worse, there is a sense mm -hmm. that the Coastal Commission is so powerful that it's hard to get anything done on the coast or near the coast to the detriment of Californians uh, economically, uh, educationally, you know, I can tell you're a little skeptical about mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah, a little. But, but how, but I'm sure you've heard this before. Right. I mean, Listen, building on the coast is difficult. Right. However, those that are building on the coast right now are those with a tremendous amount of money, and they're building for those with a tremendous amount of which money. Which begs the question. Right. It begs the question, should it just be those that have the wherewithal to put up the fight? Right. And that's the real question. And that's what this is asking. So do you believe that with your, I'll call it reforms if I may, okay. that we can see some, like here's an example. You know the Annenberg Center mm -hmm. on the beach? Yes, of course. You know, it's not in your district, but just no, above yeah. your district. I, I mean, what a the... great resource right. for all of us, right. all income levels. Right. Not... If you can afford to park there, and if you can afford to get there, Fair that's point. a different conversation but, we can have another But day. it is open. I mean, right. it is, there's, it's not a private beach club. No. It took years it did. to get that going. Yeah, it did. And that's a great resource. So how it can is. we get to a point, I mean, this may be way beyond where we're It is, yeah. But is it a valid question? It's a valid question, although nothing to do with this bill, right, quite right. honestly. This bill actually would probably have helped that get done quicker. Oh, really? Because you would have been able to take in the environmental justice uh, portion of right. that concept, which is that more people, more access would be available to more diverse communities. So this would actually probably have helped, not okay. hurt. Well, let's see. Okay, so let's go on to another bill that you okay. have percolating. Similar type of issue. Yes. And it deals with, well, let's just call give you the title, yeah. Transformative Climate Communities Program. What does yes. that mean? So what that is, is that is a comprehensive investment in disadvantaged communities in an attempt to reduce GHG. So leadership obviously gases. is greenhouse mm -hmm. gases. Mm -hmm. Obviously last year we did uh, SB 350. This is right. kind of, this is the focus of our leadership on both sides of the house. And so what this is looking at is a much more comprehensive approach at that. Uh, as of right now, most cap and trade money, we have 20% of cap and trade money that goes to disadvantaged right. communities. Of that money, 90% goes to weatherization. Obviously, this is not the number one way right. to, to address this issue. So what we're looking at is a much more comprehensive look on how to get work, local workforce involved, local economies involved, actually in the areas where the pollution is existing. Um, that way, actual underserved communities will see the money, see cap and trade money. Those local businesses will benefit from that money. The people will benefit from the environmental improvement, and hopefully, healthcare will improve. So, as well. does this money actually dedicate cap and trade dollars? This does. This right now, actually, there's a hundred million in the budget in the current suggested budget, obviously okay. that the governor has, um, and we're looking for two hundred and fifty million to the program. What do you think? What do I think? So far, and this is another one, so far, right. so good. You know, we really are working very closely with the governor's office on this issue. We just had a meeting, uh, not even a meeting, kind of right. a panel um, with representatives from the Senate President Pro Tem's office, from the governor's office. And I think the idea... Because everyone's trying to get cap-and-trade dollars. Well, everyone's trying to get cap-and-trade dollars, but this kind of holistic approach and really bringing in um, local communities, underserved communities, seems to be... We've had very... It's just It was a very positive conversation we just had in a great panel. I'm sorry you're not enjoying your new job. I know, well, you know. <laughs> Congratulations. Darn. You're, you're a new member in the uh, California State right? Assembly. Of course, her name is Autumn Burke. She represents significant portions of beautiful Los Angeles County, coastal Los Angeles County. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are coming to you from Sacramento on Local Edition.